Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Got a 2016 Softail up here on the lift today. And uh, this belongs to my friend Kat. And she was telling me when she's going through the turns, the back end kind of does a little cha 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 cha. A little back end shimmy. So, usually with the Softails uh, on the back, at least with the Twin Cam and Evo Softails, on the back swing arm, the bushings in there will wear out and the bearings will uh, get sloppy in there. And then you get a little back end shimmy going on. So, we're going to take apart this heritage and we're going to replace the swing arm bearings and bushings on this thing. This might seem like a daunting task. It's really not that bad. However, there are a lot of things you got to take off the bike to get to the swing arm. Don't get intimidated. Each one, just look at each one like it's a small, easy task. And uh, most of them really are. Got to pull the exhaust. Well, we got to pull the floorboard, pull the exhaust, pull the bags off. And uh, that should be most of it. Then, of course, pull the rear wheel, pull the brake caliper off, and uh, undo the shocks and, uh, you know, the swing arm bolts and should just fall right out of there. Might have to take the rear fender off. Uh, sometimes you can get away without taking the fender off. However, with a camera, I might have to take the rear fender off so you can see what's going on. We'll see how that pans out. So, you may not, if I have to take the fender off, that doesn't mean you have to take the fender off. And we'll touch on that when we get a little bit closer. But you can do this task. You can do this at your house. You are going to need a lift. And probably like one of the scissor lifts to get the back end of it up in the air. But other than that, most of this stuff is really just basic hand tools. Uh, so, uh, let's move in for a closer look. Okay, let's remove the right side floorboard. If you take your floorboard and you flip it up, you're going to see underneath there are two bolts. There and there. This takes a 3 16 Allen wrench and a 7 16 wrench for the nut. Using a ratcheting wrench. So in some years these were different front to year, rear. Some years they were the same. So keep those bolts in order. Should be able to just hopefully lefty loosey that sucker right off there. Relatively easy. There we go. Take your floorboard, lift it up off of there, put it in a safe location. You can put your hardware wherever you want. For stuff like this, I like to thread it back into the mount. It keeps which one is which nice and organized, and then I don't have to question it. Very simple, right to the point. Next, let's take the exhaust off of this thing. So in order to do that, first things first, we need to find the O2 sensor plugs and unplug them. Okay, here we are underneath the front of the bike. This is the reg rectifier. This is the right front crash bar. There's this little metal tab right here. And on top of that metal tab was this quick connect, all covered in road grime. It was held in place by this little push tab here. So I took a small screwdriver, pushed the push tab up, and then I was able to get the quick connect uh, down and out of there. So I took a rag, wiped off as much of the crud as I could, and there's a little thumb push-in button right here. Hopefully you can see that. We're going to push that in, and then we're going to pull the quick connects apart. Now we are going to clean this really well with contact cleaner and stuff before we put it back together. But in the meantime, this is the wire for the O2 sensor. We're going to pull it up through and out of the way. That way when we pull the head pipe off, it will all come out nice and easily. All right, now we're gonna cover the removal of the seat on the 2016 Heritage Softail. This is pretty much the same for all stock seat Heritage Softails. So, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, there's a thumb screw on the back back here, or it might be a Phillips screw depending on your bike. Uh, you'll either have to take a Phillips screwdriver, or you should hopefully be able to grab this with your thumb and thread it up off of there. Disregard this jazz, just the owner's tie-downs for when she travels. All right, take this off, set it in a safe location. In this case, it's going to be inside the saddlebags. Move around to the front of the passenger seat. Okay, so here on the front of the seat, down in there, there are two thumb screws. And if you lift up the seat a little bit, you should be able to see them. So you should be able to just lefty-loosey these up on either. 
hopefully they aren't too tight like that one is. Woo. That one does not need to be that tight. Take that one. Set it off to the side. And take this one. Lefty Lucy, that one up off of there. Set that up off the side. Now you can lift the passenger seat kind of up and out of the way. Move the little strap forward. Put the passenger seat in a safe location. From there, move your light out of the way. From there, don't lose your little seat strap thing here, but you should be able to just lift your seat right up off the back, pull it backwards a little bit, seat comes right up and off of there. Woo, nice and easy. This right here is the O2 sensor uh, plug. So as you can see, there's a lot of little accessories attached to this thing and that's fine. Um, we are gonna have to disconnect a few things just to get to the plug. Don't worry, it's all almost all on quick connect so you can't really do it wrong. But we are gonna disconnect the negative battery terminal. That way we can get to this little wire here and then we'll cut some zip ties. To disconnect the battery terminal, you're gonna need a 10, that's right, 10 millimeter socket or a Phillips bit. Just connect that right there and you can lay all your accessory wires out of the way. If you have a completely stock motorcycle, you will not have all these accessory wires. But from there, once you move all these extra little accessories out of the way, you should be able to again, press this little button right there, pull it, pops off just like that. Then from there, Sometimes you can get the quick connect through there. Today is not that day. It looks like the battery has to come out. So, I forgot what we did with our ratchet. We're going to undo the positive terminal. We always undo that one second. That way no tools land and cross anything. We're gonna take all our little wires and everything and we set them all off the side. Now I took a picture of this with my phone because the owner of this bike has a bunch of accessories on here and I don't wanna forget anything. So I took a picture of how the wires were. Now from here is lifting the battery out. And you would think Harley would give us like a wee little grab handle or something, wouldn't that be sweet? Did they? No. Am I bitter about it? Yes. Good Lord, guys. This is the hardest part. Holy shit. Okay. That was the hardest part of the whole job. All right. Now that the battery is out of the hole, you can take your O2 sensor wire, snake it down through here. It comes out much easier than your battery does. Next, we're gonna to move to the exhaust removal. First, we are going to remove the bracket that holds the muffler and the crossover and the head pipes in place. This is right behind the transmission and right below the passenger pegs. Oh, buddy, 9 16 wrench. And suckers are tight. <sighs> Any studs? God, I hope so. Rear head pipe removal, rear head pipe exhaust flange removal. All right, up in here, there are two flange nuts. 
sometimes you can get a socket on them. I strongly recommend using a, it's a half inch socket. I strongly, strongly recommend using a quarter inch drive socket because they have the thinnest walls. And that's easiest to get them on there. In this one's case, we're gonna have to take the heat shields loose. It's not a big deal, just an extra step. So, not with that socket, we're not. Take a 5 16 or 8 millimeter socket, because it's the same size, and you can just loosen up the hose clamps that hold the heat shield on there. I'll give them a little room to flex out of the way. Actually, you know what? We're just taking it off. It's easier. Just, and then there's one more hose clamp back here. Once you get them loose, you should be able to spin the hose clamp around. That way it's a little more easily accessible. And you can lift the hose, the heat shield, hopefully right up off of there. We are going to put some penetrating oil on those things. Use your brand of choice. It all works pretty good. Oh yeah, nice and easy. Or it just broke off. We'll hope it was nice and easy. All right, so I have a swivel here and a really long quarter inch extension. And of course, the quarter inch drive, half inch socket. And we're going to try and snake this up in here and get it up onto the flange nut. This is not really an easy task. Then from there, so you see how I have this all set up there? That's gonna be a key thing uh, you'll have to figure out. Try to keep the universal joint as straight as possible, otherwise it binds up on itself and it flops off. Oh, and this one came out fairly easy. All right. So we're just gonna thread this one right on off of there. And then we'll move around to the front head pipe and pull that, pull that nut and flange off. And once that's off, we'll be able to remove the entire exhaust system as one. There we go. Look, the nut even stayed with it. Cool. All right, from here, we can take that same setup. Take the right side nut off of there. All right, make sure it falls all the way to the lift. And then we're gonna have to get up in there with the swivel and the drive and everything to get to the lower one. Just gonna move that brake line clamp there so I can slide the socket in past the brake line, hopefully. Now if you have problems with your swivel flopping down and going limp all the time, uh, you can wrap electrical tape around it or see your doctor for special little pills.
trying to hit your fender with scratch paint. Now you should be able to spin that sucker right off of there. Hopefully. Everything is unbolted. We're going to jiggle it a little bit. We're going to make sure the flanges are down off the exhaust studs. Might have to get behind them with a screwdriver and give them a little flick. Careful you don't break any cooling fins off doing that. There we are, just slide those all the way down. Okay, now remember, you have two exhaust sensors here, O2 sensors. You wanna be careful because these wires are kind of fragile. So make sure they're already out of the way and kind of laying in a free location. That one's good, try not to bend them around too much. Now the trick to getting this off is one piece where everybody says, dude, my two and one head pipe won't come off or the crossover keeps from coming off. Yes, it will. There's a wee little bit of clearance right here. Right there, hopefully you can see that. Right there. So, we're gonna grab the exhaust pipe at the bottom. Let it lean it out some. Jiggle it back and forth a little bit, comes off just like that. Check it out. Back on, back off. That simple. You try it any other way, it won't come off of there. Now put this in a safe location and make sure it's not laying on the exhaust sensors, or on the O2 sensors. Okay, before I there we are. Before I take the rear wheel off of this thing, I have the bike jacked up. I have a proper motorcycle jack right here. Now I do have one of these little cheapo scissor lift jacks underneath. I had to use that because the bike is lowered and I couldn't get my proper motorcycle jack under there. So I use a cheapo automotive one just to lift it up a little bit in order to get my proper jack underneath here. So you can use these. The problem is they aren't very stable. Um, but they are a handy thing to have around for just such situations. So from there, I then have a little piece of wood on each side. That way it's sitting on the frame rails and not on the shocks. This will allow me to lift the back of the motorcycle up, get the wheel in the air where I have it right there. I'll be able to take the wheel off and that way I'll be able to get that bolt out of there, hopefully, and, uh, pull the whole swing arm right off of this thing. Here's a quick safety tip for you here. I have these really nice ratchet straps from Lowbrow Customs, highly recommend them, friends of mine, and they make cool stuff. Uh, and normally these are going to be plenty to, you know, hold your motorcycle in place. But when you jack the back end of a bike up, these do get tighter. So you can either set them a little bit loose and then jack it up, maybe have somebody spot the bike. Years ago I had a ratchet strap break because it was some cheapo Walmart one and it was probably like 15 years old. Uh, and the bike fell off the lift, nobody wants that. So. Whenever I pick it up and I put that extra load on a ratchet strap, I'll still throw just a set of cheap ones on here. And they're kind of loose, but they're really on there as a plan B. That way, if anything fails, something shifts, something breaks, you have a second ratchet strap to catch it. Uh, I'm sure somebody will out there say like, well, you just adjust your ratchet straps. Well, I don't really have a second person in this garage, so I'm doing it by myself. So, you know, better safe than sorry. Uh, little insurance. Uh, save you a lot of grief down the road. To remove your rear brake caliper, what you're going to do is you're just going to take out this bolt here and this bolt here. Oh, before you do that, down here, you see these little clips? So this is your ABS sensor, if you have ABS. You're going to take this little clip and pop it off of the brake line there. Keep track of those little clips, you're going to need them later. If you lose them, you can probably buy more or just use a zip tie. But anyways, there they are. And uh, before we take this completely apart, we're gonna have to bend up this metal tab here carefully. That way we can take this brake line out. Now, if you're just doing brake pads, you won't have to do this. But since this is uh, part of a big long shot, um, we wanna have the caliper out of the way. That way we can get the swing arm out of there. So from here, take a T40 Torx bit. Break both of these free. You don't necessarily need an extension this long. I'm just trying to keep my hands out of the shot. Also, buy really good Torx bits. The, those mediocre ones, like the ones from uh, AutoZone, they'll break. All right, 
once you have both of these broken free, you should be able to loosen them, take them right on out of there. You're going to want to keep these in order just in case they're different lengths, which I believe they are. So there's the rear one, there's the front one. I guess you really can't get them screwed up, but still, it's nice to keep them in order. Then from there, you should just be able to grab your caliper and slide it off of there. If you can't for some reason, uh, maybe it's just really grabbing the rotor for whatever reason, you could actually take the screwdriver and push on the brake pad just a wee little bit and recompress the pads just a wee little bit and then you'll be able to slide that caliper off of there. And you can slide that thing right up off of there just like that. Now is a good time to check your rear brake pads. We're looking good. Uh, as long as they're thicker than a dime, you're in pretty good shape. Now we're going to set the caliper down here. Now there is the caliper bracket right here, and when we pull the rear axle, that will come out with it. And you want to be mindful of the ABS sensor, you want to be mindful of the location, rotation, and uh, don't damage a wire. Now we're going to loosen up the axle adjusters on both sides before we even bother taking the axle out. Now when I do these, um, I try to move both of them about the same distance. That way I can reset them back to about the same distance and it makes belt alignment, you know, uh, a lot easier because you have a good place to start. So we're going to start basically with a ratchet up in the air and we're going to go in quarter turns. One quarter, one half, three quarters, one. So there's, we're going with one full turn. Now I'm going to do the same to the other side and hopefully I'll remember that or I'll have to go back and check this video. Uh, that way, when I put it all back together, it'll be easier to get the alignment close before I do the fine-tune alignment. Now we're over here on the left side of the motorcycle, and we're going to break this nut free. Seems to be inch and seven sixteenths. I have a three-quarter drive ratchet set because I used to work in heavy steel. Um, most people don't have this, but you can usually just buy one of these sockets on Amazon or something. Or I think Lowbrow sells all this stuff, too. But either way, just break this sucker free. It's probably going to be tight. You might need somebody to get the hold of the axle for you on the other side. Lefty Lucy, that sucker off of there. Take your washer, set it in a safe location. Then you can move around to the other side of the bike. Then we're gonna take a soft face mallet. We're gonna do two things here. One, we're gonna swat the back of the tire once. Why? Because that's gonna move the axle forward a wee little bit uh, to loosen up the belt in case it hasn't already moved forward. So, there we go. Really didn't move much, but that's okay. Now we're gonna take our soft face mallet. You don't need one this big. And tap that axle all the way through in there. Uh, if you need to go further, you can maybe stick a socket extension in here. Just make sure you don't damage up the threads doing it. You should be able to grab the axle the other side at this point and just pull it out of there. Keep in mind, when you do that, there's a spacer on each side of this wheel and there's an ABS sensor on the right side. So snap a few photos with your phone or something. That way you know what the order is when you go to put it all back together. All right, now the axle is sticking out a little bit ways. I can kind of reach in here, lift up on the wheel a little bit to take some load off of it, grab the axle, pull it out of there. Hopefully whoever put it in greased it, therefore when it comes out, it should come out nice and easy. Set this in a clean, safe location. From there, should be able to slide your rear caliper bracket off by going forward with it, just like that. There's your spacers, there's your ABS sensor that I told you to be very careful with. Also set those all in a clean location. And grab the spacer out of the left side. Set that with the axle and everything. All right, now that all the spacers are out of the way, should be able to roll it forward a wee little bit there and get the belt off. Now your wheel's free. Now comes the challenge of getting the rear wheel out of this thing. 
So the belt guard's going to have to come off of this no matter what in order to get the swing arm off. But if you're just taking the rear wheel off, you're still going to want to take this upper one off because it's going to give you a little bit more lean this way to slide the tire out that way. So. Should, uh, hopefully there's some... Oh, come on, guys. Should be able to take that T-bolt, hold it in place with a 9 wrench, and then take a half-inch ratchet and zip the nut right off of there. Sometimes you can just spin them off your hand. Today is not that day. Be able to slide the belt guard right on out of there. So we're gonna have to jack the bike up higher. So we're going to adjust our ratchet straps first, loosen them up a little bit, and then jack the back end of the motorcycle up. As I'm doing this, I'm being mindful of the tension on my ratchet straps. And from there, scooch right out of there. So, while we got the tire off, let's give it a quick once over. First things first, how are the, how are the brake rotors? No major grooving, no stepping, no warping, damage, cracking, any weirdness. We're in good shape there. Let's check out our rear wheel bearings. Should be able to jam your finger in there. Might have to use a rag or something. Should be able to jam something in there and give it a twist. Might be a little tight. Make sure it's not crunchy, grindy, pulsy, things like that. It should be an even resistance there. But don't be alarmed if there is a wee little bit of resistance there. It's a tight fit, it's not a bicycle. So let's wheel it around here the other side. Hopefully without dropping it on my foot. Again, we're gonna check out our pulley. Bike's got about 25,000 on it here. Pulley and everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. No weirdness. Um, doesn't look like the belt was trying to climb out. The owner of this thing's pretty, pretty meticulous about maintenance, so there's no real worries there. Again, we'll Reach in, grab our wheel bearings. Everything's turning as it should, so we're good to go. Nice and tight back there. We're sitting in good shape. Cool. Our rear wheel is off. All right. Soft tail shock dismount. Okay, so this is the bottom of the engine. This is the front of the rear shocks. This is your transmission. You're looking backwards. So you have these two cotter pins up here. You're gonna to want to bend these back straight, whoop, like that, and then you should be able to hopefully slide them all out of here. Doesn't help working kind of blind here. There we are. There's one on out of there. And then we'll work on the other one. Whoop. Let me cut on that and make sure we're still in shot. <sighs> Pull those on off of there. All right, this is a 17 millimeter. Be able to just lefty loosey both of these things right off of there. Uh, again, doing this blind, so sometimes this is a bit of a challenge. All right. Uh, 
All right, and if you lift up on the back of the swing arm, they should slide on backwards. That's how you know they're undone. Okay, back over here on the left side of the motorcycle. I already broke this free. Uh, this is going to take a 15-16 socket. Also, I have a wrench holding that the bolt in place on the other side. So you may have to do that just to keep the whole bolt from spinning. Take your wrench off the other side. Take your soft face hammer. Give it a little tap, tap, tap -a -roo. You should be able to just pull it right out the other side. Should be able to slide this thing right on out of there. Now there's some spacers in here. Um, I was hoping I'd be able to pull out and show them to you. Ah, there's one. So there's a spacer on this side and a spacer on the other side. These are left and right. There's a difference. Keep track of them or replace them with new ones. From there, Oh crap, from there I'm gonna have to take the uh, passenger peg mounts and stuff off of this thing, aren't I? Well, crap. All right, so that's gonna be the next step. To remove the crash bars, there's two things you gotta do. One, take your 730 seconds Allen wrench and break this top one free. Make sure it's in there all the way, that way you don't strip it out. Oh man, that sucker was tight. We were putting a new bolt in that one. We're definitely not reusing that bolt. There's not enough room to get the wrench on here, so you're going to have to do this with a wrench, an open-end wrench. You know, Harley, just a wee little bit more mechanic-friendly space right there, that'd be awesome. It means putting that nut back on is going to be a pain, too. At the bottom of that mud flap, there's a quarter-inch screw. It takes a 3 16th Allen wrench. Take that on out. Oh, yes. Top of this pops off like so. That should just pop right up off and out of there. You can take that nut off right there. You can take the rest of your crash bar or saddlebag protector bar off. Set that in a safe location. Be slightly annoyed at the whole thing. Then from there inside these pivot points there is a little bushing in there on each side you're going to want to slide that thing out of there don't use your fingertips because it'll hurt whoop that thing will fall down onto your fingertips there's the little bushing right there this is one of the items we're going to be replacing all right one more thing in order to get this thing out of here we got to take the rear passenger peg mounts off there's a little snap ring on here. Whoop. Slide that snap ring off. Slide the pin out. Keep mine as a little washer spring thingy in here. Whoop. Slide it all back together in the same order. Throw the washer spring thingy on the floor. Pick it up. Put it back up and on there. Put the snap ring on there so you don't lose it like I just did. Find it. Put it back up on there. Ow. I think I broke a nail. And slide it up and over. There we go. That's good for keeping track of it all. Now, take your 5 16 Allen wrench. Break this free. Woo, buddy. If it fights you, work it back and forth a little bit. Okay, now that that's free, good lord, that was a lot of work. 
Okay, if you have an ABS unit, this is your AB, or if you have an ABS bike, this is your ABS unit here. There are two bolts. There's one right there, and there's one back there. Those two have to come free, and then this ABS unit will come out towards you. You can leave all the brake lines hooked up. Just undo the zip ties. There's probably not going to be much for video content here because by the time I get my hands up in there, there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to see. But you're going to have to use a swivel and a 7 16 socket. Get those little quarter 20 screws out of there. Once you get that plastic bracket unbolted, sorry, I started to pull it out and I realized I didn't hit record. So once you get the plastic bracket unbolted, cut your zip ties and you can lift your ABS unit right up out of there. Make sure you undo your quick connects. Once you get in there, it's pretty straightforward, so I didn't bother putting it back in. But from there, you can move out to the wider shot. Do, 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 do. From there, make sure all your wiring stuff is loose. Up and out of the way. Okay, make sure your wire quick connect here is up out of the way there. There you go. And I stuck this little bushing back in here just to hold it all in place. So you're going to want to slide that thing back out of there. Be mindful of your quick connects, your wires, and everything. And just slide it right out the back. It's not as daunting as it looks. It's kind of heavy. Anyways, slides right out the back like so. Keep track of any bushings or anything that come off of these shocks here. Um, you're going to want to keep track of these things. They're rather important. Whoop. So you will want to slide those back on there. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Whew. That was a lot of work. All right, from there, we can work on... From there, we'll take up on the bench and uh, replace these sloppy uh, swing arm bushings, bearings. So we've got our um, old bearings right here. And they are held in by a snap ring, but the snap ring's really just to hold how far it goes in there, so you don't actually have to dig out the snap ring. They will actually push out that way. So, I have, you can use gear pullers or bearing pullers and stuff. I have an assortment of sockets, bolts, all thread and whatnot, so I basically kind of built my own. Uh, and I have a socket on here. This is inch and seven sixteenths, and that should be larger than the bearing. All right, that looks like it's going to get us somewhere there. After 85 tries here. All right, so after 85 tries, we have a inch and 7 16 socket here, and then a 13 16 3 8 drive deep well here, and a 3 8 bolt running through all of them. Now we should tighten this up, and it all goes well. The bearing should go out that way. Let me get a different ratchet. What the fuck? Why is this? Oh, God damn it, it shifted. Got your snap ring on there, just like that. We're gonna start it. Sometimes we just like to give a little squeeze in there, just like that. That should hold it in place. So 
So make sure you're nice and square. Make sure your socket is pressing against the outer race, not the inner race. If it presses against the inner race, you're going to damage the bearing. If it presses against the outer race, you're pushing on the metal that is against the friction surface and there is no damage. So, a close eye to detail is very important when selecting your sockets. I'm sure someone will disagree with me and argue with me in the comment section. Use a socket on a bearing. That nah, ain't the right way to do it. It is if you know what you're doing. So, then tighten it up. And it should go in nice and easily. If suddenly it gets tight, if it goes crooked, if it starts like creaking really loud or popping, stop. Investigate. Sometimes a little popping is normal, but don't just blow it off. Okay, it's getting tight. Why? Because it's going crooked. So it went a little crooked, and some of it wasn't lined up, probably because I was yakking and talking to the camera as I do in it. So we will tap it back out of there and try again. Whoa! Don't do that. All right, make sure everything's in good shape. Check out the inner bore there. We're going to take a little emery cloth and clean that bore up. Or a sanding sponge. These things are really handy, by the way. They're made for, like, drywall and stuff, but, man, they work great for this stuff. Alright, this time I'm going to pay attention to what I'm doing and talk less to the camera. There we are. It's actually started in there nice and evenly. Again, our socket. Flat washers. There we go, nice and smooth. Run in there till it stops. See if your snap ring's seated. And if you're wondering, I use a half 20 grade five bolt. Grade 8 would have been better, but Ace Hardware didn't have one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give this a little inspection so this snap ring is still a wee little bit loose. So the bearing might not be seated quite all the way down on there. So, we're going to do this lightly. Ah, there we go. Now it's seated up against it. You don't want to hit that too hard because there's nothing supporting it right here. So, now clean up all your tools and your shit that's everywhere. Then we can reinstall the shocks and then we can put it back on the motorcycle. Yay! So in the chaos of 
work trying, trying to get the bearing in there trying to get the rusty one out uh, end up having to take the shocks off so uh, we're going to put those back on there so add yourself a drop or two of medium thread locker i like to call out the strength because uh, this is permatex and it's blue and i know at one point uh color varied by strength from manufacturer to manufacturer so the big goal we're after here is medium strength thread locker which happens to be blue no promises that yours will be blue these things have to be tightened really tight there is no left and right to these shocks in reality. However, I know uh, these ones are the bottom because there's big scratch marks on it because the woman that owns, it, owns this thing rides it like a demon. I mean that in the best possible way. All right, so got this set to 120 foot pounds. There's that one. And we're going the other way, so. Oh, that's not gonna work. Let's turn that thing around there. Again, whoop. 120 foot pounds. Almost there. There we go. All right. Whew. So my arm's ready for reinstallation. Let's move back to the motorcycle. All right, we are recording there. We have audio here. Whoop, whoop. Okay. From here, swing arm reinstallation. So, get this big old heavy sucker up in place. Feed your shocks through there. Make sure you don't catch any electrical quick connects as you do it. Feed those in and all the way forward. And feed your swing arm up into place. Okay, I have a new swing arm bushing here. There's the old one. They look pretty much the same. And the old one's got a little wear on it. So what I'm going to do is lift this swing arm up into place and then push this bushing in from the back side. And it's going to go through the bearing and through the swing arm here. Oh, I forgot. And as you do this, you have to get the front of the shocks through the shock mounts underneath the frame. Because God forbid there not be an extra step in there. Check to make sure nothing's pinched. Make sure nothing's in the wrong spot, like the brake caliper and hose. Take it back out of there. Make sure your brake caliper is in place. your belt is in place. Check for anything else that you forgot here. Now that your swing arm is ready to go in place, you can take your bushing, slide it in here from behind, slide into the swing arm first. Ah, Getting the first one in is a little bit of a struggle, but it's sitting through there now. Now we'll take our another other new bushing, go around the other side, 
slide that in place. There we go. Swing arms back in there. See? That wasn't so bad, was it? Okay, so we're just reversing the order of operations from before. So first thing we're gonna do is slide this ABS unit back in here. Hook the ABS unit up on top of that back of that transmission mount. Take this plastic cover, slide it in place. Make sure all the wires are laying in a nice good spot. Make sure there's no weird pinching. Luckily, if you're doing this with a used bike, wires kind of have memory, so you should be able to get in there and be like, oh, this obviously goes here. From there, start that bolt in right there. Before we tighten that up, we're going to go to the two most difficult screws, which are going to be those two that are above the shocks. Let's change camera angles for that. Eh, or not. Remember those two really difficult ones that were right up here? Yeah, we've got to get those back in there. That's not easy. Got them both start in there. Now I can put a socket on them, tighten them up. All right, now from there, make all your electro connections. The nice thing is, you can't plug these into the wrong spot by design. So, plug that one back in. Then, put your ECU looking thing in here. I don't know if that's actually your ECU, but it kind of looks like it, so we'll just run with it. Alright, make sure your ABS one's lying off to the side. So here's what we're going to do. I'll lube up the swing arm. That looks lube, doesn't it? Isn't it? We're going to start that bolt in here a little bit. Then from here, we have new inner bushings here. One of them's left handed, one of them's right handed. It says on the package. It's due to the length. Here's the right handed one. The big flange goes up against the swing arm. I guess you can't really see it, but I swear it goes in there. Barely. Slide that one in. Slide in all the way over the other side. See right there? Hopefully you can see that. That's the other side. So we're going to go over that side. Remember, flange towards the swing arm. And these have to be perfectly square to get them to slide into place. It's not that big a deal, just know that they have to be right on or it's not going in. And once it's in there, you should be able to slide the bolt in place. Wiggle the swing arm a little bit. from there tap that sucker through just like that service manual on this calls for um, 150 foot-pounds and some medium strength thread locker grab a little medium strength thread locker on there 
put your washer on there. Start your nut on there. Now you might have to get an assistant to hold on to the other side. So I have my lovely assistant here, my wife Meg. Say hi, Meg. Hi. All right. Pulling. Yep, it's going to. It's going to get harder too. All right, click set. Click says it's torn. Thank you very much, assistant. Greatly appreciated. <laughs> That's all I need. Thank you. You're all right. So there, your swing arm is reinstalled. You can now get underneath and tighten up your shock bolts. Okay, so before I install this, there's nuts that are on the other side of the rubber bushings. I measured those to the same length, um, sticking out, that we have the same amount protruding out from here. You don't really want to measure it from this side because, I mean, you could, you'd have to tighten it all up, make sure all the bushings are compressed, back it off, and even then it wouldn't be super exact. So you're better off measuring the other side then you can take your, you know, then set it, put your shocks in place. Then you can take your nuts, put them back up on there. Take your 17 millimeter socket. Run them down tight. Tighten those up really well. Then from there, you take your counter pins, doing this blind, so I got a field hole there. All right, so got some new counter pins right here. Slide those through the hole. They're a little bit longer in stock, but they'll work. Slide that one through that hole grab them with your needle nose and just bend them up somewhere that they won't come out There we go. Da, 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 da. They're in there. They're not going anywhere. So, next thing you're going to want to do, move any little quick connects here out of the way. Make sure everything is pushed back and snapped into place. Your bolts are tight there and there. And then we can take our mud flap, slide it back in here. And uh, try to get the top to snap in first. There it goes. And then slide the bottom one in place there. And once it's in place, make sure your quick connects out of the way. There we go. Once it's in place, just like that, you should be able to take your screw and washer and thread it right down on, on down in there. Tighten her up. So you should be able to slide this thing back in here. Hopefully you remember exactly the appropriate angle you used to get it out. 
because you're gonna have to repeat that to get it back in. And I guess I probably could pick the back end of this bike up a little bit higher, but it fit. So you might have to get it a little bit higher than that. Holy crap, there was a bracket underneath the tire. <clears throat> Move that stuff out of the way. Once the rear wheel is up in here, put the belt on first. I know it sounds silly, but trust me. Roll the belt on up over the pulley. It doesn't matter that it's not tensioned or anything yet. It's just a really good plan. Otherwise, you spend a lot of time down the road fighting with it. The belt's not too flexible, so. Then from there, <clears throat> we're gonna slide the rear caliper bracket in place, and it goes up onto this flat here that's mounted on the swing arm. So scoot your tire off to the side there. And this thing should barely fit through there. If it doesn't fit through that side, put it in through the front. There we go. And the rotor will slide into a little slot that's inside that bracket. Okay, this is where the order of everything is important. You have a skinny spacer on the right side. This spacer sits up against the axle adjuster. There's even a little witness mark on it right there, where the dirt or where the bolt was pressing up against it. Slide that in place. Take your axle, clean, lubed up with grease, slide her in there to start it. Next, you're gonna to wanna to put this spacer in this side. Make sure both sides of it are clean. And you're gonna see these little grooves on here. Those actually go towards the wheel. Um, I'm not sure why, I just know that's the way they go there. I'm pretty sure this sucker is symmetrical, but you know, we're just gonna do it anyways. So we're gonna slide that thing in there. It's not really gonna stay. Hang on, let's shimmy the tire around here a little bit better. There we go. But we're gonna slide this thing in here And as we lower this down, I'm gonna have to lower it down a little bit more, but as we lower this wheel down, or lower the bike down to the wheel, I'm gonna have to make sure this stays in there and goes in the backside and gets lined up. All right, we got to a spot where it's kind of balanced in right there. So I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. Check to make sure that's all still Moving freely as it should be. Ah, there we are. So this spacer has to go into that notch in the swing arm because the axle adjuster pushes against it. So there, I got the axle through the spacer, through the disc brake mount. We're gonna lower it down a wee little bit more. Then we're gonna take our ABS sensor. This will be the final spot to slide this thing in place. Whoop. And start sliding the axle all the way through. You probably have to jiggle the wheel a little bit to get it all to line up. You shouldn't, you might have to tap on this a little bit. If you do, do it with a soft face mallet. But keep in mind, if you do that, if those threads on the other end are binding up, you're going to damage those threads and it's going to be a nightmare to get the rear axle on. So uh, be very careful if you have to tap on this. All goes well, should hopefully be able to just jiggle it around and get it through there. Actually, I have to pick the back of the bike up a little bit. Lower the back of the bike down just a wee little bit. Goes all the way through. Just like that. Then take your washer 
and the nut on the other side, thread it on there. Don't torque it down, don't even tighten it all the way up. Just thread it on there right now. We'll get to the rest later. So slide your pads till there's a gap in between them. Then you can take that gap in between the pads, put the rotor in there, and slide your caliper back down on there. You may have to jiggle it a little bit to get your pads to seat in place. Oh, hey, here's another point I should make. Let's see if you can see that. Right here. Can you see that? Right there. These two tabs of the pads go in down in there. Now, some people would probably say I should put the caliper on first, then slide the pads in place. That's probably the responsible way to do this. But in the end, I've never been known for being responsible. Now, you can take this bolt that goes in the back there, thread it in, get it to start in there. And don't thread it in all the way yet. Now, take your front bolt, wipe the threads clean, thread that one down in there. Locate the Torx bit socket that you had for this that you now can't find because you're disorganized. There we are. Take your T40 Torx bit. And that thing should thread in there relatively easily. Till it stops. We're going to thread the top or back one in, whatever you want to call it. Thread it in until it stops. Right there. I'm going with 20. Why? On used stuff, the threads are never perfect, so I always go with the higher end of the torque specs. That way it kind of overrides any binding of the threads, which could give you an inaccurate torque reading. One click there. All right. Now remember, before you go for a ride, pump your rear brake a few times because you need to get those pistons to seat and the pistons and the pads to seat up against the rotor again. Otherwise, the first time you hit the brakes, you're not gonna have anything. Nobody wants that. All right, how far in shot are we? There's this, there's this. Now from there, From there, whoop, we can slide. Got our brake wire here, and we got our little clip that came off of this that holds our ABS sensor in place. So we'll slide that up out of the way, make sure it's not bound up on anything, make sure it's got a little bit of looseness back there. Then I somehow or another ended up with the quick connect behind the mud flap. It should have been in the front of it. Luckily, mud flaps are flexible. From there, we can plug our quick connect back in for our ABS sensor. Now, I forgot to put this thing in here before I put the mud flap on. Uh, so there's just enough room in here, I should be able to get in here and pop it into place. However, you're not gonna be able to see it. So moral of the story is, remember to put that thing in. All right. This rear bracket thingamajigger. Next, I'm going to reinstall this uh, saddlebag crash bar bracket thingamajigger that's mounted to the passenger pegs. I don't know what it's called, but we're putting it back on. Take your new bolt here, 3816, in case you're wondering. Start that one in there, thread the passenger peg mount in a little bit further, 
They really love stacking stuff together here, don't they? Take your 3816 nut, or you may refer to it as your 916 nut, because that's what size wrench it takes. Slide that thing back in there. Thread the bolt in so it starts on that nut. Realize this is going to be a tedious process. Okay, so you may remember when I took this thing apart, um, I backed the bolt out one full turn. So we are going to take it in three quarters of a turn on both sides. Right about there. Now to set the rear wheel alignment on the soft tail, you measure from the center line of the axle to the center line of the swing arm bolt. In this case, that's going to be like, well, looks like we're at 17 inches right on the money. Now we're going to compare that to the other side and we're going to make sure we're fairly close to being straight. Then we're going to check the belt tension. Now we're going to compare this side. Now remove this axle adjuster. Man, uh, it's really close. Um, this one's about 15, 16, 15, 16. So this one's actually gonna have to go out a little bit more. But before we do that, we're gonna find the belt tensioning tool that I just had in my hand. So Harley recommends uh, half inch of deflection with 10 pounds of force. Half inch, three eighths of deflection. So on some of them, you have a little window here, which is great. Uh, this one doesn't. So we're going to push it through the middle there and it's not even perfectly straight, but I have this little belt tension gauge I got on Amazon and there's a little mark on it here that says 10 pounds. You probably can't see it, but I swear it does. Either way, we're going to push this up here and push on that belt tension to the mark. all while using the tape measure. Can you see this? Probably not. That's right about a half inch at 10 pounds. So we're gonna call that pretty good. So that's an interesting conundrum because this side actually needs to go back a little bit further to get proper alignment. So what we're actually gonna do is loosen up the other side uh, and then we'll check it uh, side to side and then we'll torque it down. All right, we're at a 15, 16, 15, 16 so over on this side. All right, now it's in place. We're gonna to torque the rear axle. They're inch and seven sixteen socket. So before we reinstall the exhaust, we have to replace the exhaust gaskets. They're like a wire mesh, and if you get behind them with like a Harbor Freight pick or like a flathead screwdriver, you should hopefully be able to get behind them, flick them up there a little bit, and hopefully grab them a pair of pliers, pull them all out of there. Usually they kind of come out as one. There we go, just like that. Take that, put someplace important like the trash can. Then get your new exhaust gaskets. Figure out where you put your new exhaust gaskets. There they are. Take your new exhaust gaskets. Well, first make sure it's all nice and clean up in here. Take your new exhaust gasket, get it lined up nice and square and it should slide in there. If it doesn't, don't force it because you'll distort the gasket. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> I 
Have all your hardware set off to the side and ready. You're going to need it. And from there, try not to stand in front of the camera. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Slide the head pipe up there through those notches. Get the flanges up in place. And your exhaust is mostly back in place. Now from here, you're gonna take a little tension detail, get the flanges up on there. Don't force it. Kind of spin them around, line them up, and get the nuts on every single one of those things started on before you even consider torquing anything down. Make sure you don't cross thread them. Remember, it's a fine thread. Sometimes the easiest way to get these up on here is with a socket. Balance them in the end of the socket, or at least the end of the socket extensions. Drop that on the floor. This one here is always difficult. There we go. That one's thread up on there. Now before you get too far, remember your O2 sensor wires? Slide those things back into wherever it is they were routed. It's good to do this now, that way if you have to jiggle the pipe around or something to get them past something, it's easy to do. Don't forget about your rear frame bracket mounts here. Thread those on there. Now the saying is with exhaust, you always start at the back and work forward. Uh, because the back tailpipes are what everyone sees. Uh, this is especially true on baggers. We've always seen the guy with the, the crooked muffler pipes on his bagger. Nobody wants to be that dude. So there's not a lot of wiggle room or adjustment in these. Now you can get up in here with your quarter inch drive half inch socket and your swivel. Tighten each one of those up. Snug them both up, tighten them up, torque them a spec, and go back and torque them again. Same torque spec. The idea is, since it's a two bolt flange, you'll kind of rock back and forth before it seats down on there. Once the back one's done, move to the front one, or vice versa. And then, of course, after about 100 miles or so, you're going to want to put a wrench, a socket wrench on there again and uh, just give them a little bit of a twist and see if they move. Sometimes, once you get a bunch of heat in the gasket, it all compresses a little bit. Um, yeah, and uh, listen for uh, exhaust leaks. You'll probably be able to hear them, or you'll be able to stick your hand in here when you first start it up. And uh, if there's an exhaust leak, you should feel a whole bunch of hot air going <laughs> out there. And from there, pull your O2 sensor wire back up through here. And go right to the quick connect right there. Snap her back in place. Next, we can drop the battery in and rehook up everything up here. Make sure all the wires are out of the way before you do this. That way you don't end up with the one on the bottom underneath the battery. Who gave us a little more room there, Harley? But you know, whatevs. Alright, now we're going to do the positive one first. 
So we'll go through, find all our wires that need to attach to this. This bike's got a lot of them. When you do this, make sure you put your heavy, heavy gauge cable on the bottom or right up against the battery terminal because that's the one that needs all the amps. Every contact surface has resistance, so that's your most important one because that's what's going to start your bike. So make sure that one is down on there clean and good and tight. Then lay all your negative ones down here. Same scenario. Put the important one, the heavy one, the big important heavy one down on the bottom. Find your bolt. There it is. Tighten them up there, find a socket, give them a little bit more. There you go, and there you go. Now before you go any further, make sure nothing looks weird, make sure nothing looks pinched, make sure it's all laying. Why is my phone beeping? To make sure everything's laying in a good spot. Add in any zip ties that you may have cut out during this process. Make sure the wires are all laying down flat. The rubber grommets are in place. Point being, because once the seat's on there, you can't see what's up against what. So. Make sure it's all sitting in a nice, safe location. And then turn the bike on, make sure everything works. All right, now to put the saddlebags on. Just to clarify, this bracket here, it needs to go on the outside of the crash bar, not on the inside of the crash bar where I initially installed it. This little bracket right here this needs to go on the outside of the crash bar, not on the inside of the crash bar when I initially installed it. So, from there, to put the saddlebags on. You have two holes in the back of it. You have this whole bracket structure back here. So there, there, and there are your tie-in points. Have all your hardware ready. And the trick is to get the top ones lined up first. Get them kind of slid on there. Get the bottom one kind of lined up down there. And from there, you have your carriage bolt. Uh, slide that into the back of the bracket and through the front end. Take your big old flat fender washers. Drop the nut down inside the saddlebag. Fish it out. and thread those on there. From there. Run them down until they're snug. Torque them to spec.